I've been uh, on the Switch, and I've been playing what remains of Edith Finch. Before I start talking about it, Greg is Chris Chris Finch, uh, Edith's brother. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a, a reference that uh, <laughs> Nick will probably will probably get. <laughs> Finch, he's a good lad. He's a good lad. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody good, and, damn good, um, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and this game, what remains of Edith Finch, is as I'm downloading it, and as I'm looking at the synopsis, I don't know too much about it. I'm thinking Greg will probably hate this game. It's that kind of Firewatch. It's that kind of journey. It's very slow, plodding narrative tale uh, from a first-person perspective. It's a story-driven tale of a girl called Edith, because obviously the title is What Remains of Edith Finch, facing the metaphorical ghosts of her family's past. Um, She's the last remaining member left alive of the Finches, and she decides to return home, and that's where you begin basically walking down this elaborate driveway, uh, which is more of a mountain mountain path. And as as you're walking down there, words start appearing in you know just in front of you, and it's it's really really well done, in in the the narrative, the way the words appear on the screen, the way you interact with it. So words will appear by a gate saying, "Oh, I remember this gate," and whatever she says, and then you open the gate, and bang, the words are scattered across the the, the pavement, and as this story is progressing, you get to your house and you realise that when it's making you look at the words, basically. So as the words pop up, you're drawn automatically to those words so you don't miss anything important in the kind of environment. So you go through the entirety of this child, your childhood home, Edith's home, and you basically piece together the family's secrets by looking at their old possessions now, in and out of itself, I thought that was the game. When I bought it, I thought that was a game. Oh, it's intriguing enough for me to play through it. But the thing with Edith Finch is that when you look, for example, at someone's diary to to elicit some sort of memory, you actually become that person in their time. So I think the first the first person, for example, is Molly, and she's like... Um, Uh, from what I can see, like a six or seven-year-old girl. Back in 1947, she's locked in a bedroom. The parents won't let her out. It's time for bed, they shout into the the, the, the door. So you go back to bed, and then you realise you're hungry. And the game is always, through its narration and the words popping up, pushing you along a linear path. You don't particularly have to go there. You could go somewhere else, but you are being pushed along this linear, narrow path. The story is very linear. But then... Each story you go through, like Molly's, for example, she's a girl of imagination. So she starts eating the the red berries off a holly uh, because it's Christmas time. You can see the Christmas tree in her bedroom. Um, She starts eating the red berries and she, oh, I'm hungry. Then she sees a bird. She opens the the window and, you know, you're kind of scared for her. But she turns into a cat. She chases the bird across a tree. Uh, She catches a cat, she eats the bird, she says, I'm still hungry. She turns into a shark, the shark falls from a tree, rolls down into the ocean, she goes through the ocean, Uh, she's killing fish as she's a shark, she turns into a sea monster, this tentacle you go in, and each and every part of this controls differently, and it doesn't tell you how to control it. And at first that seems like a problem, but it kind of becomes intuition of how to work out how to move this tentacle you know you move it with the r stick you press zr to grab on and then drag with the left stick to pull yourself forward and as you're working away you work your way eventually back into the bedroom and underneath the girl's bed which you become the girl again and she says something really witty and funny it's that's just one of the stories and as you're going through there must be about 12 or 13 different finches from your family that you will interact with through their stories through their objects and every single one is a different mini game and the vast majority of them are what's the word just lovely they they make you feel that this is a family, even through its flaws, through its 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 arguments in the past, through everybody dying apart from Edith. Um, you do feel something for this family. You 
equate to them. They're, they're obviously equate to more than others. Some of the stories are incredibly short. There's this beautiful one about a boy who disappeared and he's an artist and you go up to the loft and you find where his studio is and he's got this flick book and all you're doing about his story is just watching this flick book play through. But it, every single story, I there's a few letdowns, but most of them are very, very well told. And then it doesn't, like other kind of story narration things, they kind of ram their metaphors down your throat, you know. That Gris, for example, is really heavy stuff on its depression and all that. And it's not heavy in its depression, but it's heavy storytelling in, oh, this is what depression is. This is really, this does nothing like that. It's very light in its metaphorical senses. You can take away anything that you want, just like a good movie, you know. You can take away what you want from it uh, without it pushing you too far. There there are some really standout stories. One is Grandpa Sam, and he was a camera buff. Uh, and everything, the whole story for him, is told through the lens of a camera and taking pictures of certain uh, pivotal parts. And the whole thing is, you know, voice narrated and all that. So it, it, it gives a sense of depth to the story as well. Um so basically, it's a very short game, about three hours. I I put my Let's Play up. I think I got my last part of it tomorrow. If anyone's interested, I, I think if you're jumping in, there's there's one, I think it's part four, which has a, a thumbnail of a, a baby in a bath. You, you are the baby in the bath for that part of the story. That would be a good one to get the kind of feel for the game. But um, if you were to watch a Let's Play or play it yourself, start from the beginning. So I was I was taken aback actually. I wasn't expect I was expecting something good from from what has been said about it. But but things like Gris, people are saying rave things about that, and obviously that didn't strike a resonance with me. This did. It didn't overstay its welcome. Each story was a separate own thing, separate separate little mini games in each one, and the overarching things that either takes away as you finish the three hour playthrough. Uh, it's, it kind of makes you feel kind of, oh, yeah, yeah, if I was the dad. Um, lovely, lovely little game. Good stuff. I've heard I've heard a lot of good things about this, and it actually won a few awards, didn't it, when it yes, came out? Yes, it won a hell of a lot of awards, yeah, mm-hmm. BAFTAs and everything, I think, mm-hmm. from, from what I can see. it Like I said, it, it does do what good movies do. It makes you think, rather than ramming that metaphor mm-hmm. and telling you what you should be thinking, every single little story pushes you towards thinking about a different way it's very very well done yeah you did start by saying like uh i would hate it <laughs> but you've, you've intrigued <laughs> me like ah good i'd be i would be interested in giving it a go actually i think i can't remember how much i paid for it but it was in one of the the sales that recently happened mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm quite sure it'll be back on sale at another time cool yeah it's very very nice if if you like that kind of thing Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give us a like if you've enjoyed our content. You can also check out our other great content on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and the Any Cafe podcast from all good podcast providers. Just follow the links in the description below.